Hello and welcome. So today I'm simply going to show you how we can connect MySQL database to uh, uh, Apache Superset. Uh, if you're following through, you know that last time in our previous tutorial we were setting up Apache Superset but on Windows, but um, using the uh, instructions that are found on their web page. So I'm going to assume that you're working on a Linux or Unix uh, platform. Um, working on a Windows platform, it's a bit hard today because they have certain issues like uh, some of their code inside their code, the Python code, uh, there is a script where they align where they call uh, the timeout function for their signal alert, of which a signal alert is not present on Windows platform. So you can only really use Apache superset on a Unix machine. But maybe in the future, I'll try to come up with uh, a way of editing that code since it's open source and then try to uh, give uh, work on Windows, use Apache Superset on Windows. So this is the a, a screenshot that I made from one of their threads on GitHub where they get to say um, they do not run their tests against uh, Windows platform. So Every time you try to do a connection to MySQL database or, or or other databases, you cannot do that because there is a certain timeout uh, limit that you have to set when you create your new database instance on Apache Superset. Contribute to this for Windows users. This tutorial, I must, I'm going to assume that you guys are working on um, Unix-based machines. So since I'm on Windows, I have my uh, Vagrant box that I created my machine so let me just log into my box it's uh Ubuntu 18.04 LTS and I'm using uh, the uh recommended Python version Python 3.6 from from their documentation so to start off you need to start your superset server and then to do that uh like what they what they recommended on their website you have to be working in a virtual environment right so I created my virtual environment um, inside the land folder. I'm sorry about that. I just have to go in uh, quick. OK, so since we are on a Unix environment, if we want to activate our uh, virtual environment, we simply say source and then you specify the folder where your virtual environment is, um, and then the bean, and then you say activate, you press enter. This, I, I, I just assume that you very well know. And then once you see this part, it clearly shows that you're in your virtual environment, right? Just like what we talked of in the previous uh, tutorial. So to carry on, we need to start our Apache Superset server. So we say Superset run. Uh, and then I'm working on, um, on a Vagrant box. So I'm going to specify, explicitly specify um, my IP address. Sorry, specify that it has to so that I can view it on the on the host machine, host browser. This is not in the background box. So I'm going to say hyphen h for the host, hyphen host uh zero 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 so meaning that it's open, right? Uh, and then the port number that I'm going to use is port eighty eighty with threads. Dash, dash, um, reload and then press enter this command again you can get it from their documentation you can see it it's it's there except that i've added the host part where i i am not running on it's it's just a box I, I hope you understand how Vagrant works, but nevertheless, it's just a simple tutorial that I want to show you. So my Vagrant box is hosted as a uh, static IP address of 192.168.33.10, and then I then press enter, and then let me log in, my password, database. So what you need to do is go on to sources, and then click on databases. And then on databases, 
you don't 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 make the uh, mistake of creating this new button on top here if you want to add a new database connection you simply go on to this little uh, round button and then click to add the record this is where you specify the database name that you want uh, pretty much it's, it's sort of like the connection name it's not actually the actual database that you have but it's the connection name so we can say uh, beer okay I'm just going to say beer right it's, it's good and then for the SQL URL there is the documentation where they get to give you a documentation of um, how you can connect MySQL or how you can connect um, uh, a SQL Server database SQLite and all that so something like so you specify you if you want to connect MySQL it's MySQL then you put the full colon and then two forward slashes just like how you write it uh, with probably close to how you write it when you're dealing with a Java connection to um, MySQL database and then after the two forward slashes what follows up is the username so this is the structure you have to say this is a must my SQL then uh, four column then two forward slash and then after that you specify I'm going to put uh, calibrations you specify the user or rather the username right that connects to the database um, and then you have to put the full column again and then you specify that uses password and then you have to say at now you're saying at which host this is the host IP address this is the host location the host IP and then from there you put a forward slash and then you specify the database And then you specify the database so this is um, this is the the way it is uh, font probably let me just increase the font a bit but then yeah so I had mine here I created uh, this database that I created on my value so um, if I'm to open my SQL workbench this is what I created and this database, this is just a database server that is running on my um, on my Vagram box. So this is a separate tutorial. But then just mimic it. Uh, I'm assuming that you have your IP addresses for where your database resides. So I created a user called Tadio, and then I put the full column using that uh, same format that I gave you. And then this is the IP address of um, the host machine that is running the database and then this is the port number and then this is the database name the database like classic models that's the database name right like this one that is found um, on the box so once you've done that all you have to do now is to test connection I advise you to, I highly advise you to test your connection before you go any further so if you test connection for a successful connection you simply go on to see this OLED box that says seems okay it pretty much means that you have successfully connected to uh, your MySQL so um, there are other errors where you get to see an error like this one where it says error connection fell at the error message in the module this error usually is highly related to you not having uh, the MySQL driver for Python so if you are to experience this error please try to install my SQL client for Python so I, I have a document that probably by the end of this whole course I'm just going to um, attach to to for you guys so this is one of the errors that I experienced where um, I was trying to connect to the database and then I didn't have uh, my SQL client installed so all you have to do is do a pip install my SQL client or just install my SQL client uh, for 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 you to be able to connect to the database so if you see an error message like this one um, it is mostly related to the absence of my SQL client driver for your Python 
and then you can also experience other connection issues where you 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 your credentials are simply not the correct ones that one it simply gives you um access denied for the user an error like this one check at the end here where it says access denied for the user this simply means that your credentials that you have offered they are not valid and it's a lot bigger so you can see it's a bit different from that one of uh my sql client that's missing all right so uh carrying on um if you test the connection you get to see that this one uh it seems okay right and then we have this timeout issue this timeout i prefer using the 200 this is one of the issues that um this is where mostly you experience a problem if you're trying to run apache superset on windows the next thing is you get to try to if you want to write queries you get to take this one you want to expose that uh database connection that we have just created in the sql lab this is where we get to write our queries and then asynchronous execution this is pretty much just like the description where you get to say the queries that you'll be executing they'll be running on the client machine and not the server we do not want that then uploading csv is going to be a, a tutorial for for the next so everything else um I'm, I'm simply going to leave everything else the way it is and then click save once you've saved you get to see the database and who created it and a few other properties there so i hope this one uh helped someone thank you for for watching